Previously on Bullshit Artists. Al Russo, that's his name. He didn't call himself Jethro Spivey back then. He was Al Russo, Alphonse Russo. Senior year, he removed one of his kidneys on a dare. And then he had to donate it to science, even though he didn't want to. But he, you know, he couldn't put it back in. He didn't have the medical skills. Come to think of it, he was voted most likely to lead a life of mystery and intrigue. Do you know if he ever lived in New York City? No, I have no idea where he went. He didn't send us a postcard or nothing. He died in 1993. Cancer got him. He was a good kid. Never got into much trouble. Well, except for that one time. He cut off the vice principal's balls and fed him to his frog gene. Those were strange times in Baton Rouge town. So what do we know? Well, we know that Jethro Spivey's publishing career began in April of 1979 in New York City with the publication of the play, I Fart, Therefore I Am. We also know that in 1977, a 20-year-old by the name of Al Russo left Baton Rouge, Louisiana for parts unknown and was never heard from again. Or was he? A high school friend claims that Russo and Jethro Spivey are one and the same. But Al Russo died in 1993, and Spivey's publishing career continued for another decade. So, what do we know? I'm Scott Gordon, and this is Bullshit Artists. reach the archive department of WBSN 44 in Albany, New York. We are unfortunately out of the office right now. If it's if it's lunchtime, we're probably getting a delicious sandwich down at Dan's Deli on the corner. Great sandwiches, check them out. But if you leave your name, number, and a brief message after the beep, we will get back at ya. Hi, I'm calling in reference to a 1998 human interest piece by reporter Stu Hamilton that you guys ran titled Jethro Spivey Fact or Fiction. And I'm doing a podcast investigating the whereabouts of Mr. Spivey and I was wondering if I could use some of the audio from that piece. If you could give me a call back, my name is Scott Gordon. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, and my number is 205. I'm Stu Hamilton, and welcome to another edition of Arts in Albany. Ask anyone in the New York theater scene who the most influential playwright of the past 20 years is, and you'll inevitably get the same response. Jethro Spivey. Spivey's irreverent and sometimes shocking plays have long been a staple of the smaller community theaters statewide, and though critics often cite the off-putting nature of his lewd and controversial subject matter, Spivey's influence continues to grow. A production of his play Admiral Pansy broke attendance records a few years ago at the Albany Crest Theater, and his latest work, Nard City, is garnering rave reviews. Indeed, it would appear that Jethro Spivey is a bona fide celebrity these days, but what makes this poet a playwright unique is that he's never once given an interview to the press. Not a photo op or a sound bite, not even a public appearance of any kind. In fact, after inquiring around, it would seem that no one has ever laid eyes on Spivey. No known address, no phone number, nothing. Our search for Spivey begins in the New York Theater District. Housing about 200 pages. So this is how Stu Hamilton's fluff piece began in 1998 on Channel 44, WBSN in Albany, New York. He covers much of the same ground we have up till now, including the claims that Jethro Spivey was merely the pen name used by Al Russo from Baton Rouge. What he doesn't know is that Russo died in 1993, five years before his search began. 
The most interesting thing that Stu does uncover, though, is where Al Russo went after leaving Baton Rouge. Union City, New Jersey. In fact, he actually tracks down the landlord of the apartments in Union City, where Russo lived from 77 to 78. This is the voice of Benjamin Khan, now deceased, who owned Disco Land Apartments with his brother Gulan in the 1970s. I do not know who this Spivey is, but I do know the Russo, and if they are the same person, the Russo owes me $500 from 20 years ago. That is not compounded interest. That is a lot of money. And if he does not pay soon, if you find him, tell him if he does not pay soon, I will send the goons. And the goons break the legs. Not a good place to be. Right? So I would like to talk with uh, the Russo or the Spivey or whoever this person is. Because time is a ticking. And there will not be much left. The sands drip to the hourglass like so many uh, things going through the hourglass. And it will not be pleasant for him if he continues this delinquency. I will not be responsible. Well, technically I will be responsible, but I, I don't know what the goons will do. I say break legs. They may break face. You know? Hmm? So, as you can tell, Ben really enjoys talking about his goons and what they'll do to you. But he eventually calms down and resumes his tale of Al Russo. But I digress. The money is a real sticking point for me, as you can see. I apologize. But back to the story. Uh, 1977, uh, Union City, New Jersey. My brother Gulan and I are running the... Disco Land Apartments. Don't laugh. The disco was very popular with the kids, and we were located right down the street from the Rotunda nightclub, so we had a lot of disco kids staying there at the time. So the Russo comes, Al Russo, we call him the Russo, comes to me in 1977, and, oh, I need a place to stay. I do not have enough money this month, but I will get it for you. Please, please. And the Russo goes to this club rotunda every night. How he has money to go to the club but not pay his rent, I do not know. But I am a nice guy, so I give him a place to stay. And then uh, he is short on cash every month. Please advance on rent, advance on rent, advance on rent. And I am a nice guy. So I let him slide on the rent. Well, now... He is into me for $500, and I will not stand for it. And uh, to, uh, to be fair, I have stood for it for 20 years, so I guess, yes, I am still standing. But I would like for you to tell the Russo if you find him. Give him a message from Ben. Ben says, pay, pay now, do not pass go, do not collect $200. That is what I tell people that I uh, do the veiled threat to. I should have told him this years ago. He would not have run off with my shit, man. So, do not pass the go. Do not collect the $200. You must pay. And you must pay with interest. And tell him Ben will send the goons. Do not even attempt to get me started on the number of goons that I will send for him. I have goons waiting in the wings like so many actors on the side of a stage ready to leap into action and kill the... Not kill. I Did I say kill? Not kill. Kill. That is figure of speech. I am joking. Please erase this tape, please. I am uncomfortable with what I have said now. Please. So what's the takeaway here? Aside from the fact that there are lots of goons out roaming the world searching for Benjamin Khan's missing $500, it's that Al Russo did move to the New York area in the late 70s, coinciding with the publication of Jethro Spivey's first play in 1979. Russo lived in Union City, New Jersey, directly across the Hudson River from Manhattan, less than a 20-minute drive to the offices of Junior Mint Press, who published Jethro Spivey's first play in April of 1979.
Yeah. Hi, is this Anthony Packy? It depends on who's asking. <laughs> is this about I... the drugs? Because if so, I don't know shit about no drugs. I... No. I already told you. No, it's... Anthony, it's not about the drugs. Um, I'm calling, I'm trying to track down someone that used to frequent the Rotunda nightclub back in the 70s. Did you work there as a bouncer? Yeah, I worked down there from 75 to 85. I was down there for a while. They used to call me the package. (laughs) The package, because of your name? Because of your last name? Yeah, because of my name. That's why. Okay. Fucking guy. Did did you know of a guy that came into the club by the name of Al Russo around 77, 78? Yeah, I knew Al. The Russo. That's what they called him. <laughs> right. Uh, he hung out with the actors and the theater people. Uh, it was him and uh, Lorna Pettigrew and a guy named Dennis Salat came in there together. Huh. Yeah, I thought they were all banging each other, but you know, those theater people are weird. They're down there all the time, flopping around the floor like you do when you're high on coke and, you know, the disco beat is grooving you. Yeah. But I don't know, you know, who he went home to or where he lived. To... But I would look for, I don't know Dennis's last name, but I would look up Lorna Pettigrew. She lived down there, uh, Union City way, I think. Union City, Jersey, huh? Yeah. Yeah, check her out. She probably knows all about him. Okay. She and Dennis and Al were close. All part of that theater scene. Yeah, they hung out with the actors and the writers and all that. They were down there a lot. High as fuck. As it turns out, Lorna Pettigrew, in addition to being a disco diva, was also a bona fide star of the New York theater scene. By 1977, she'd already starred in dozens of off-Broadway productions, even some of Mason Jerkins' plays at the famed Foxlight Theater in Brooklyn. She retired in the late 90s and now lives in Providence with her three cats. The walls of her modest one-bedroom apartment are plastered floor-to-ceiling with playbills and production stills. She's one of those people who have hundreds of stories from her days in the theater and is eager to share them generally, but there's one subject that she manages to artfully dodge every time it comes up. Jethro Spivey. Oh, honey, they were extraordinary times. Everyone has a moment in their life where everything comes together and the light just explodes out of you. And we were creative, we were young, we were so high on cocaine, it was great. I'm getting a nosebleed just thinking about those days. And there was Dennis and Al, and sometimes Mason would join us down there, and we were all being creative and young and beautiful, and we called the cocaine the white line of truth the white lasso of truth. Something to do with Wonder Woman, I don't remember. We were stoned, honey, stoned. But that doesn't mean that we weren't walking the walk and talking the talk. I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, I don't know either. I just, sometimes things just come out of me. (laughs) Sometimes things go into me. Oh no. (laughs) So tell us about the key players in this creative group of yours. There was Al Russo from Baton Rouge, Dennis. No one knew where Dennis was from. And Mason from Boston. He was a son of a bitch, but oh, he could write plays. I loved being in his plays. What about Jethro Spivey? Did you ever know Spivey? Well, I've told you that I do know Jethro. And was Jethro Spivey his real name? No, that was not his real name. Can you can you tell us what his real name is? Honey, I don't want to talk about this. We can talk about so many other wonderful yeah, things. Yeah, but I, th- 
the, the character Jethro Spivey is why we're talking. No one knows anything about him. People don't even know whether he exists, whether he's a real person or not. And you say you knew him. So it, surely there's something you can tell us about him. Is he real? Is he a fiction? What's the story behind this character? Here's what I will say. One night at the club, at the Rotunda Club, Dennis tells Al, because now remember, Al was very shy. He wanted to write. He just didn't know how to get it out of him. Mm -hmm. He was shy about getting rejected. He was just, it, he did not handle rejection well at all. And Dennis tells him that he is writing and submitting plays under a pen name. And that pen name was Jethro Spivey. I'm a little confused. You mean Al was writing under the name Jethro Spivey? No, Dennis. Well, I've, I've been told by multiple sources that Jethro Spivey was a pen name used by Al Russo. Well, I believe Al started using the pen name as well. Although I couldn't say when or for which plays. But Jethro Spivey was not a real person. Jethro Spivey was several people. Wow. You heard me right, honey. Jethro Spivey was a fiction. Created by Dennis. Dennis created him first. Al just picked up the mantle and ran with it, but Al's plays weren't published until much later. I'm so confused right now. That's all I know. You do know that Al passed away in 1993? I did not. That is so sad. I should have reached out to him. Yeah, and Spivey's plays continued to be published for another decade. So, Honey, I don't know whether you want to pursue this story. Why wouldn't I pursue this story? Because it's not natural, and it doesn't end well for anyone. I have that feeling in my bones. Because at a certain point, you've got to ask yourself, how bad do I really want to know? Because some stories are better left untold. On the next episode of Bullshit Artists. Shit, it's a mystery. It is a mystery. Would you like another drink? No, I, th I think I'm good. I think you need another drink. Bartender, can you get us another round of shots, please? Thank you. I don't think I want another drink. Jesus Christ, man. Maybe you didn't hear me the first time. There's no one here by the name of Dennis, all right? As far as I'm concerned, all your children can burn in a lake of fire. <laughs>